All right, welcome to a tutorial on how to replace the score bug in College Football Revamped. Just want to say that this is for the PC version of the game through RPC S3. If you're not set up that way, I'm sorry. That's just what I use. I'm not going to be much help for you if you're going through the PS3 or the Xbox. But if you do have questions on those systems, I would recommend hitting up the College Football Revamp Discord. It is going to be your best source for all of the answers that you don't get from this video. All right, y'all, welcome to this quick and easy scorebook tutorial for College Football Revamped. Now you'll wanna make your way over to the College Football Revamped Discord just to download the files from GitHub for the new score bugs. This is a really easy process and I'm assuming in this video that you already have College Football Revamped installed. If you don't, also go over to the College Football Revamped Discord. You can find everything you need in that channel. Once you're in the College Football Revamp Discord, you're going to want to navigate over to Community Mods and then find the score bug all in one release. Once you do that, you're going to scroll down. You can read all of this, but you're going to want to click the GitHub link. And this will take you to, and I already had it open, but this will take you to the link where you need to download all the different score bugs to replace the current ESPN one that is living inside of the game. Now, shout out to the guys who did this, the Keith, Myth, Tanner Watkins, Living Human, and the College Football Revamp team. Igloo, you see the names on the screen. So as you can see, we've got the CBS, SEC, ESPN, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, plus the CFP score bugs, which is pretty dang cool. So let's say for this tutorial, we're gonna, we're gonna put on the CBS one and maybe I'll show a couple other ones too. So we'll click the CBS link and you'll get a screen asking you whether you want to use PlayStation buttons or Xbox buttons, or you can do the manual install and download the individual files. Now, what this will enable you to do is actually edit some of the AST files if you wanted to make modifications yourself. We'll go through both, both processes, but for the first one, we're gonna do the easy way, which is just clicking the buttons you need. So I'm gonna click PlayStation buttons. We're gonna download this thing, and I've already downloaded this, so I'm gonna cancel that. It will download, you open it up, you'll have a zip file. So this would be the one right here, CBS, PS buttons, open it up extract it, go inside of it and you'll have four files, right? And I'm going to make these larger so you can just see the icons a little better on the screen. You have your KQL boot, the FE2IG, the interface and the patch file. Now this is pretty dang easy. All you have to do is replace the files that are in the directory for college football revamp. So with this folder open, I'm going to open up the directory for the first replacement. There are going to be two locations where we're going to be replacing. So the first location, usually your college football revamp is probably on your C drive. That's where mine is. I'm going to go into games, RPC S3, then to dev HDD zero disc. And you're just going to keep clicking in here. So finally we get to game USR directory. And boom, here are some of the files we're going to replace. Now, very, very important. Before you replace any of these files, back them up. I'm going to say it again. Before you replace any of these files, back them up. So just to be safe, what I would do, grab them all, copy paste into a new folder on your desktop, which I have already done. So I myself have a backups for score bug folder. These are my original four files. You could copy everything or you could just copy the ones you need. So I copy paste these in here. If I want to revert, it's very easy for me to do that and nothing will be screwed up. Please make a backup. Okay, with that said, to get the CBS score bug, we have three files that are gonna go in this directory. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste. It's gonna prompt you if you wanna replace them. Yes, because you have backups. So it's okay in this case to replace them. Now the next location we need to go to is for the QKL patch file. For that, we're gonna go back to DevHDD. We're gonna go to game, your blue, fo your blue folder, US directory, DLC, and there is your KQL patch file. Before you drag and drop it, make a backup of this file, just like you did for the other three. Back this file up. Please. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna drag and drop. We're gonna replace. Boom, done, okay? At this point, you're all set. 
your CBS scorebook will be there. Now, if you've replaced any teams with your own logos, you're probably going to have to edit the interface file, but we'll get into that in a second. So let's load up College Football Rebound just to take a look at what we just did. All right, there you go. College Football on CBS pops up. Look at that. Nice and pretty. You will notice some errors with text. The margins are a little off, a little misaligned. Hopefully the guys are working on fixing that. There you go. Here's the kickoff. CBS score bug installed. It's that easy. You can even see in the top right, you've got the little overlay up there for CBS Sports. Pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool. Now, next we'll get into how to replace it with individual files. It's not much different. It's a little more of a process and it would really be for if you were replacing a logo or any other art. See if we can give up a touchdown here just to see the graphic that happens when someone scores a touchdown. Unfortunately, you still have your ESPN splashes on transitions. I'd love to know which files replace those. I would get in there and replace them. I do all of my transitions in uh, post for Rapid City Network, but it would re be really cool to hard code it into the game because it does end up being a lot of post work, as you can imagine. <laughs> and there it is. Finally, there you go. A little touchdown graphic at the bottom. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Except for that frog. Get that nightmare fuel off the screen. All right, next we'll take a look at what you need to do if you were replacing the individual files. So if we head back over to that GitHub link, let's do the CFP for this one, shall we? So we'll download and you will see you have your buttons, options, or individual files at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure I downloaded the individual. I did already, but what you would do is just click this link. You would download this file and it's pretty straightforward. So I already have it downloaded, extract it, you know, unzip it go into individual and you have your AST files. Anybody that's done any modding of the game knows what AST files are at this point. I'm not going to explain them. If you don't have the AST editor, you're going to want to pick that up. You can't do anything from this point on without it. All right. So if we open up some of these AST files, so I'm going to open up the patch file first and you can see in here, Got a lot of AST files. I don't know what they all are. I haven't gone through and actually extracted them just to see. But you can do that with the interface file on 141, and this is your team logos. So let's say you have a team that has been replaced in your dynasty. This is where you're going to want to replace the logo to make sure that it comes over, or else it's going to revert to the old teams. In my case, this DDS file right here for Rapid City needs to be replaced. So I already have this DDS file made, but I'm going to show you how to actually do this here. You're just going to right click extract selected because Buffalo was the team I replaced. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now, All right? You'll see it pop up up here. There's the DDS file. Now there are two ways to modify this. You can do this with paint.net or you can do it in Photoshop. I personally do everything in Photoshop. But if you don't have it, paint.net is a good free option. Now you're going to get this dialog box that says the file contains transparency and mint maps. Leave them both unchecked. Click OK. And here is the DDS file. OK, so I'm going to remake this, even though I already have this made. What I did was just open my logo. And now I'm going to resize it to fit into this box. This is a pretty big logo. resizing basically to fit the dimensions of the bulls logo here because you don't want it to go off the screen in certain instances so there we go got that there i'm going to go ahead and delete the bulls layer and then when i go to save this save as make sure it's still dds and what you can do is you can change the file name. I like to put underscore two. Um, if, save as type Intel Texture Works, right? If you don't have that, I'll leave a link to that as well. You'll need that for Photoshop. With paint.net, you will not have to do that. So when I go to save this, you're going to get some options here. For texture type, this thing does have mint maps. So we will, what we want is color plus alpha. And this is easy to reference to. If we bring back up the AST editor, you can see that this is a DDS type of DX5 with 10 MIPS, right? 
So when we load this in, we want to make sure that that doesn't change. So in here, you're going to notice that with this setting, the way it is color plus alpha compression, DC three, a BPP linear puts it at DXT five, right? And now important down here for mit maps, leave it on auto generate. Okay. I'm going to click. Okay. And now it saved it out. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reopen the AST editor because sometimes it's a little wonky. I just want a fresh open here. So this is a CFP file, right? 141. We'll go down to the bulls. There it is. All right. So DXT5, 512 by 512, 10 MIPS. I'm going to go to replace selected and I'm going to navigate to my file. So it's on my desktop. And there is the replacement. Click open. And there it is. And you can see DDS type did not change. It's a DXT5. It's got 10 MIPS. This is exactly what you want. And once that's done, click file, save as. And in your CFP 2022 folder, I'm going to put an underscore two on this interface file and save it directly there. And then I can just close out of the AST and go to the next step. So now we're going back into our disk folder game into your USR directory. And again, make sure these files are backed up, back them up, copy them out, paste them in a backup folder. Like I've done here. I have an entire folder that has my original boot fe2 ig interface and patch file all in the backup folder very very important okay so now we're going back into the ast editor we're gonna go to open we're gonna navigate to that directory so disk blue ps3 game us r directory we're gonna open the interface ast file So now I will navigate all the way down to 141 because that is the AST file that needs to be replaced in the interface file. So right click it, replace selected, navigate to the file that you save. So in this case, this, this is the one for me with underscore two. I click open. You can see it has an import name. It's going to bring it in. Now, what you can also do while you're in the interface file is bring in the 427, right? So I'm going to go down to 427. We're not making any changes to that file. So we're just going to bring it in. Replace selected. Grab it. And there it is. Now, file, save as. And this goes in your USR directory where the actual game is, right? So it's not going to. You don't need to overwrite what I do. Put an underscore two on it. Save. And you notice it populated, populated immediately right in the folder, right? We're going to close out of the AST editor. And what you can do now is delete the original one because you've backed it up, right? You've backed this up <laughs> so you can delete it. We're going to delete it and then we're going to rename the underscore two file and just take the underscore two off, right? So it's replacing what you had before. You could overwrite it. This is just the way I do it. So you can just save it in there. Sometimes you run into permission issues. It's just a very easy way to do it. Okay. So once that's done, we have one more file that we need to put in through the AST editor, right? So for the patch file, we have to navigate to the patch directory. So we're going to go back to the game directory here and go back to dev HDD zero game blue USDIR DLC and then down to the KQL patch file. We're going to open that with the AST editor. So we're opening that back up, open NCAA AST, and we're going to navigate to the patch location again, which is dev HDD zero game blues, USR DIR DLC KQL patch.ast. We open that up and it might take a second, depending on your processor. We opened up the KQL patch.ast and we want to navigate to the fifth file down, which is an AST. We're going to replace it 
with five underscore patch AST. So to do that, just right click, replace selected, navigate to your file, which is five underscore patch AST. Open, you'll see it's in the import name. All right, so now we're gonna click file, save as, and this is our original file, right? This is the one that's going in the game folder. So we gotta navigate back to the patch location, which is game, blues, USRDIR, DLC, and there is KQL patch. So we're gonna click that so it populates the name, and then we're gonna add an underscore two, save it. You'll notice it went really quick on mine. It might take a little longer for yours. We're gonna close out of the AST editor, and the same thing as before, we're going to delete the original file and rename, but make sure it's backed up just like the other files before you delete this. So I'm deleting the original. I'm changing the underscore to taking it off. And now we have the file. We'll load it up and see what it looks like. All right. So there you go. You see on the bottom line here, you have the CFP ESPN layout. Pretty cool. You probably noticed some CBS stuff because I forgot to change out back to the original files on the other ones that the individuals don't replace. So there you go. Pretty easy to do and pretty slick looking. Again, you notice some margin errors with the ticker. Some of the fonts don't line up correctly, but other than that, pretty freaking sweet. So the last thing I wanted to show you is remember we replaced Buffalo's logo. So let's navigate to Buffalo and just make sure it took. And there it is. Now I've done some other editing to get Rapid City in there, but the logo has been replaced. What it won't replace is the score bug itself, the name and logo there. I do that in post. So if someone knows how to do that in the score bug, let me know and I'll make another tutorial on that. <laughs> so lastly, let's say you want to go back to your original ESPN ticker. We're just going to copy and paste our original files that we backed up in the very beginning of this. Please tell me you backed up those files. <laughs> So my, my boot FE2IG and interface file, I'm going to copy those. I'm going to paste them into the PS3 game USR directory here. Boom. They're in. I'm going to navigate back to the patch folder. So back to dev HDD zero game blues, USR DIR DLC. And there's your KQL patch AST. We're going to copy our backup. We're going to place it back in here, replace it. And just like that, we should have our original score bug back. No harm, no foul. And I will load it up just to show you. And there you go. I'm back in Rapid City. I have my original files all in here. Again, like I said, I update the score bug and post for the logo and team name. So if anybody knows how to do that, let me know. But everything else is back to the original ESPN one that comes with college football revamped. All right, that'll do it for this tutorial. I know um, it was kind of fast. Like I said, it's a really simple tutorial. You now, if you've got questions, please do make sure you hit up the College Football Revamp Discord. I will link that in the description and probably in the top comment. The search is useful. You can find all of your answers there if you did not get enough information from me. So let's wrap this up. If you want to see more tutorials or you want to see something more in depth that maybe I touched on here, like the, the replacing the logo and the AST editor, let me know in the comments below, like the video, subscribe, because we've got a long way to go until NCAA football 25 or EA college football 25. But I'll be here until then with all the news on that, some tutorials on college football revamped, and of course the Rapid City Dynasty, some road to glory stuff, all college football all the time, man. So until the next video, go Stegos and go Bucks.